recommend you write fan fiction unless you're already well settled into your career. If you're still developing as a writer of fiction, uh, I'm, you know, it's up to you, but you probably don't need to. I'm Robert Beatty. This is New York Times, April 10th, 2005. New York Times book review, paperback bestsellers. Fiction and nonfiction. I this was my uh, nonfiction bestseller. Number four. Behind Malcolm Gladwell and Brian Green, above Eric Larson, Mitch, Jared Diamond. Oh yeah, down here there's a. Let's see. Yeah, way down here is this guy. Dreams from my father, Bar Senator Barack Obama at the time, 2005. Over here, fiction, my sister's keeper, another Morn book, another Dan Brown book, Angels and Demons, and so forth. So, as I'm said, uh, unless you're already settled in your fiction writing endeavors, I think you should write some fan fiction because this is conventional among successful fiction writers. Uh, besides being a best-selling author, I'm now retired, but I had a long career. I'm almost 70 years old. Uh, I had a long career in human resources and employment law. Among other things, I interviewed, researched, and made a semi-formal study of writers uh, as employees. Most wrote fan fiction when they were young. You don't have to. It's not required, but it's conventional. Um, okay, like I said there, I practice law. Uh, it's my bachelor's degree, human resources. Uh, back in the 70s, I was a newspaper columnist. Wrote Teen Talk for the Wichita Beacon. So, what fan fiction did I write? Well, the first thing I wrote, and this was my story was published in 1968, was a Star Trek fan fiction. There were a lot of fanzines. And the next thing <coughs> I wrote was a prose, a novel, full novel about Peter Parker's Spider-Man. It was mostly Peter Parker. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, then I wrote, there were a lot of sports books, like Frank Merriwell, and he played baseball. He did other sports. Uh, I believe he played football as well. <coughs> Pardon me. And then I wrote a uh, Doc Savage fan fiction. Now, as far as I know, I don't have any people read my fan fiction. It was published, small small circulation journal. I think one read my Spider Man, and I, no one ever read my sports book or my Doc Savage. Now, here's this guy, Stratmeyer. Um, had a fantastic career, sold lots of books. He started in the 1800s and wrote uh, The Rover Boys and uh, uh, Ruth Fielding. Now, the uh, characters aged. Rover Boys grew up, became men, had children, and then they became the Rover Boys. Ruth Fielding uh, went from a, a young girl to an old woman, and uh, Stratmeyer said, that's too hard. So he invented new characters, and he said, these are going to stay the same age. And the new characters were the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew. 
Now, back when he was writing the Rover Boys, he wrote this one. The Rover Boys on the Great Lakes, or the Secret of the Island Cave. That was one of the favorite books of this guy, Isaac Asimov. It's his memoir, I, Asimov, Memoir. One of the most popular of the series books in my younger days featured the Rover Boys. One of them, the Rover Boys on the Great Lakes. Blah, blah, blah. When I started to write, I wrote in direct, even slavish imitation of this book, Rover Boys on the Great Lakes. I called it Greenville Chums in College. Now, there was another series written by Stratmeyer. The Chums was in the title, so he may have also read that, but he doesn't mention it. Anyway, he wrote this. It was fan fiction, basically, an imitation of Rover Boys. And uh, so Isaac Asimov became astonishingly successful. I've had some success, and I wrote fan fiction, as I just told you, you know. Now, I think, as I said, uh, I don't know how many read my uh, Star Trek fan fiction. Uh, only one read my Spider-Man fan fiction, and no one read my uh, football or Doc Savage. Now, after I became a best-selling author, um, I, I had an agent at that time, and it was, you know, sometime after this, April 2005, I had uh, contractual commitments through when the uh, movie came out, but then I contacted my agent, and I couldn't find a copy of it, but I said, look, uh, I can write uh, a Star Trek novel, you know, can you contact Paramount and see if they're interested, and I told him, you know, the gimmick I had in my story, and he liked it, he said, yeah, that's good, but no, I'm not gonna contact Paramount, they don't pay anything, and of course they pay, but compared to what he wanted, uh, he said, just write a science fiction story using that gimmick, and uh, it's possible I'll do that someday, but uh, I got a deal on a different book, so I wrote that. Now, uh, you, if you're already settled, well, you don't need to write fan fiction, but um, if you haven't written fiction, you don't have, to, this is just part of your education. Go ahead and write a fan fiction short story or novel, novella, and hone your, hone your craft. You know whether you're successful or not. Asimov did. He wrote essentially fan fiction Rover Boys was his first novel. Um, that is not just in um, anecdotal. As I said, I did some research and that's very common. And just think about it. I mean, when I went through law school, uh, later I would be expected to write legal briefs and other legal papers. So what do you do in law school? Well, you practice writing those. Uh, whatever your area, you've probably done some writing. And to prepare for that, you probably wrote drafts. Well, it's what you can do in fiction and nonfiction. Write practice documents, drafts, uh, for your own education and your own practice. So that's the gist of it. Write, write your fan fiction. Good for your career. Good for your learning.